everyone, this is Sarah with RegisteredNurseRN.com and today I'm going to be talking about nursing report. I'm going to talk about how you should give report to an oncoming nurse, how you should receive it, and where you can go to get some free report sheets that you can print off and use on the job with you. So it makes things a lot easier. So um, to get that, you can go to our website, RegisteredNurseRN.com, go to the search bar which is at the top right and type nursing report templates or nursing report sheets. Um, it's the first result, click that, and you'll go to a page and you'll see little pictures you can pick from, which templates you like, um, which ones fit your unit base needs the best, and just print those off and print off as many as you want and you can use them to help you whenever you're giving report. My experience with um, nursing report sheets is it was it is very vital for me as a nurse to have my report sheet anytime i would like maybe misplace my report sheet in a different pocket or it was underneath what i call my mac cart this is where we give our medicines and i placed it in the drawer or something i would always freak out because my report sheet is my brain and it helps me um, to remember things what meds i need to give um, last time the patient had a bm or something important that the doctor might ask me that i can just easily um, have a reference to. So this is like one of the sample report sheets that we have on our website. It's right here. You could do two patient uh, things of patient's information. And it literally, it's combined and it's just compact with almost everything you need to know about a patient before you start your shift and as you go through your shift. It's just an excellent reminder to help keep you on track as you go through your um, day and what I do with my report she sheet um, at the end of the day I always shred it so tip always shred your report sheet whenever you're done giving a report you don't want to stick it in your locker or take it home with you that is a big HIPAA violation you always shred this in a shred bin on your unit before you're done and I would always um, during the shift I would keep it in my pocket my scrub pocket so I could just have it for reference um, so here's some of my experience with nursing report I am um, I usually work day shift and I would um, have night shift, they would give me a report. And I've had nurses who have gave me excellent report. And usually, and I've noticed the nurses who give me excellent report, tell me everything I need to know. I usually have a better day because I know what to expect with the patient because it's so important that you know if the patient's gonna be maybe potentially discharged, what procedures they have so you can know not to feed that patient. Um, when their IV needs to be changed, all these things. And it's so important to report that you give that information to the, the nurse coming on. But on the other hand, I have had some shift reports that are absolutely pitiful. Um, the, pay, the nurse has really just wanted to go home. They've had a terrible day or something like that. And so they've just gave me whatever they could, didn't give me a good report. And as I went through my shift, I found out that the patient wasn't allowed to eat because they're going for a stress test or they need um, troponin levels every six hours and I wasn't told that or something crazy that you don't want to not do because it you don't provide good patient care whenever that happens. So in this video, I just wanna teach you this is really for new nurses or maybe a seasoned nurse just to brush up your skills, maybe you've been out of the profession for a while or um, you just want some tips. So in this video, um, I want to give you behind me on the board is information that whenever you're collecting a report or giving a report you really need to give that other nurse coming on and things that you need to write down on your report sheet and um, just hopefully make your shift a better shift and provide good patient care so like i said if you want those report templates they're really condensed down you circle things you check things you write down little things that helps you go through your shift i really recommend you go to our website registernursrn.com and print those templates out so let's get started with what you want to get whenever you're giving a report back here these are not in any certain order okay it's not like this is number one so that's the most important thing i just wrote down everything that you should have okay first i have right here is attending doctor as the nurse, you need to know who is the attending over that patient's care of the doctor. Because when a patient's admitted, if they have a lot of things going on, they're gonna have a lot of other doctors on board. But the attending doctor is the main doctor who's going to be admitting and discharging that patient. So you wanna know who that is. So whenever you're paging or calling or whatever, however you communicate with doctors, you know you're getting a hold of the right group. Consults, you need to know on your report sheet who is on board for this patient. Um, like for instance, if a patient's admitted with congestive heart failure, more than likely they are gonna have a cardiologist on board. So you need to know who this cardiologist is, what group they're with. Because a lot of hospitals have 
maybe three or four um, cardiac groups. So you need to know that you're paging the right group to get your patient's needs met. So always write down who is on for the patient or also, and if they're still on board, because a lot of times these groups will sign off, like cardiology will see the patient, their cardiac problems, good, so they've signed off. So make sure that that group is still on board in case you have to reconsult. Diagnosis, always know what your patient is admitted for. I know a lot of times as a nurse, whenever I call a physician and they're not familiar with the patient, they'll say, well, what was the patient admitted for? And if your patient's been there for a week, they're, you know, you might not know because there's so many other things going on. So they really like to know the original diagnosis. So always know what they were originally admitted for. And plus that's very important when you're doing your discharge teaching as well. Code status, a biggie. Um, always know if your patient is a full code, meaning that they want CPR, they want intubation, they want um, drugs, they want everything if they were to go into cardiac arrest. Or if they're a DNR, which is a do not resuscitate, they don't want anything if something happened to them. Um, also, there's some gray areas. I know that many times as a nurse, I've had patients who are um, compressions only, but they don't want drugs. It's what the patient wanted or the family wanted through the patient. So always make sure you know what the patient wants because I know one time this nurse the patient was coding and um, it turns out and they did everything for the patient, but it turns out the patient was a DNR. So um, if that would have been communicated and report better, however, I don't know how the lines of communications got messed up there, but um, always follow that and know your code status. It's very important. You never know when you're gonna need that because a lot of patients will just go into cardiac arrest and you don't even know what was coming. So always know your code status. Allergies, another important thing. Always know your patient's drug allergies because you never know if you're gonna be in an emergency situation and you're not gonna be able to go through your drug check. Cause you know, a lot of us, I have, we have what's called MAC cards where we have to scan the drugs and um, scan the patient, make sure that it's good and it has to go through a pharmacy check. But sometimes I know um, where I work in the stress lab, we um, have emergency situations where um, a patient's actively maybe having an MI and we have to give morphine and nitroglycerin and stuff. And I don't have time to go through those checks because we're in an emergency. So I have to know if that person is allergic to morphine. And believe it or not, people are allergic to morphine. So I wouldn't give that patient morphine. So always know what your allergies are. An important history information, always know, um, jot down and ask the nurse or give the nurse information on important health history because the patient might be admitted with pneumonia, but they have a history of diabetes or um, they have a history of MRSA because a lot of hospital policies, the patient has a history of MRSA and if it's been within the past year, they have to be in contact isolation. So always write down your important history. I know many times patients come in and they have two, five books full of important history. You don't have to know all that, you just need to know the highlights. And a lot of times um, physicians might wanna know what they have a history of too whenever prescribing medicines if you have to call and get an order. So you wanna know that. Um, this is another big thing. Whenever I first started out in nursing, it was, it was important like what their status was in the hospital, but now insurance, since Obamacare, everything's kicked in, you really need to know what status your patient is for discharge purposes. For instance, um, are they progressive care, which is ICU step down, telemetry, med surge, and I don't have it up here, but observation. Because if they're observation, they have to be discharged within 24 hours. But also, this is very important to know if they're progressive care, telemetry, or med surge or even ICU if they can be if they can be transported off the unit to go to testing procedures. Um, where I work in a progressive care setting, we cannot let a patient go off the floor without a nurse at the bedside to any type of testing procedure um, unless, uh, unless we have a doctor's order. So you always wanna know about that. And plus, you can't start certain drugs or certain drips on um, a patient on a telemetry floor like you could a progressive care floor because there's more monitoring. So always know the status, the um, admitted, admission status of your patient. IV site, another important one. With the IV site, um, you need to know when the IV was started, how it looks, um, when you need to change the dressing, uh, what size the gauge is because for a lot of tests like a, a CT with a PE protocol um, test, you'll have to have an 18 gauge in the AC, which is a large vein so they can push dyes through. So you need to know what gauge needles and everything like that, what you have and if, that if the IV needs to be changed. 
um, central lines, the same with that. That's your pick lines, your um, IJs, everything like that. You need to know how that site looks and um, when those dressings have to be changed. And that's based on hospital protocol because you always want to keep those dressings changed so you don't get infection. Two feedings, a lot of patients are on two feedings, so you need to know um, if the patient's on a two feeding. If so, how are they getting that two feeding? Is it through a dop off, which is in the nose? Is it in a peg, which is in your the stomach area? Uh, how's the tubing? Do, does it need? Do you need to change new tubing? Tubing is usually good for 24 hours. What type of um, feeding they have? How often it goes? And um, also, if they're having any procedures, because if they're going to be going for surgery, you may have to turn that tube feeding off at a certain time so the stomach's empty. So that's really important things you want to know about your tube feedings. Um, also, wound care. A lot of patients are admitted with wounds. Um, you need to know, and wound back. So you need to know if they have a wound back, any drains, how often the doctor's ordered for the dressing to be changed. Um, if they are on a wound back, if it, is it continuous, intermittent suction, what's the suction rate, things like that. So you wanna know if they have any wounds. Um, and things also, this, what I'm gonna go over right here is really, really important whenever you're getting a report, because before you go in a patient's room, you wanna know what their baseline is. For instance, neurostatus. If the patient is confused and the nurse is giving you a report and they're like, yeah, the, the patient's been alert and oriented, you know, knows their name, knows their birthday, everything really good. And then you go in there to do your assessment and the patient's confused, doesn't know what day it is, doesn't know their birthday, then you know something has changed from when that nurse had that patient to when you're getting that patient and that will throw up a flag. But if the, if the nurse told you the patient was confused, um, they don't know their birthday, they don't know where they're at, then you wouldn't be as concerned. So very important to know your baselines. Also, you wanna ask that nurse skin. How's the patient's skin? Is there any pressure ulcers that have developed? Do they need to be turned every two hours? How does the skin look? Heart rhythm, another important. I'm a, I'm a cardiac nurse, so I'm very into heart rhythms. So you always wanna know what that baseline heart rhythm is and have they been running normal sinus the whole time that they've been here. I don't know how many times I've had a patient, they've been in sinus rhythm and I'll go in, cause I got a report that they're in sinus rhythm and I'll go in the room and then they're in atrial fib. So that's where your history comes back because you will look back in the chart, does this patient have a history of AFib? So always know that and know what their baseline rhythm is before you go in there. So you'll know, hey, this isn't right. I need to get an EKG. I need to do all this stuff. Um, lung sounds, another important. Uh, you need to know, are the lung sounds normal? Are you hearing, do they have crackles? Do they have ronchi? What's going on with this patient? What's their um, SpO2 been? How many liters of oxygen are they on? Um, are they using BiPAP, CPAP? Things like that. So you need to know that before you come on. Bowel status, this is a big one. I don't know how many of you nurses are out there watching, but bowel status is so important to a patient, especially your elderly patients, because they have a lot of constipation issues. And um, so always know the bowel status of your patient. Uh, how, are they constipated? When was their last bowel movement? This is also important on patients who have had surgery because you're waiting, especially a surgery around the bowel or something like that, you're waiting for that bowel movement to make sure they've had a bowel movement before you discharge them home because that tells us, hey, the bowel system was working. So um, latest bowel movement is very important. Uh, your renal system, you um, need to know, we aren't using Foley catheters as much in the hospital because we've learned that they cause infection. So we only use them as a last result. result. But if your patient does have a Foley, you need to know um, how much they're putting out, um, is it secured, how's it draining, everything like that. Also, you need to know if your patient's incontinent, which means are they urinating on themselves and don't know it, how's the skin looking things like that. So you need to know um, their intake and output as well. So you need to know, make sure they're not retaining too much fluid or taking too much in. So that's important. Um, blood sugar checks, that is, if you work day shift, that is a big thing during day shift because you have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You have to cover, if your patient's on sliding scale, you have to know your blood sugar checks. When you've got to check that blood sugar, what's their latest blood sugars been, things like that. Um, on those report sheets that I was showing you, we actually have um, when each blood sugar check is due and to write it down and things like that. So blood sugar checks, you definitely wanna know from the oncoming nurse how their blood sugars have been running. 
Diet, that's another important thing. With diet, a lot of patients are on special diets. If you work a heart floor, they're probably gonna be on a heart healthy diet. Um, are they on a fluid restriction? Are they not allowed to eat anything because they're fixing to go for a procedure or they're here for GI problems, a gallbladder issue, so we're keeping them nothing by mouth. That is really important. I had a friend one time, the patient, she wasn't told in report, see another reason why it's so important to give good report, that um, she wasn't told that their, her patient was going for um, a procedure of the heart and they had to be nothing by mouth and this procedure was so important because we'd been putting it off for a long time because we're they were waiting on some blood level to come back well she didn't know so she let the patient eat breakfast and the physician called and was very mad that the nurse had fed the patient and she got an earful from the physician and she was really upset because she didn't know that the patient couldn't eat so diet is one of those top ones that you really want to know even though it seems so simple it's very important Vital signs, um, really that goes back to the baseline thing. You want to know how your patient's vital signs are running. Um, is, is a 40 or 50 heart rate normal for this patient because they're fixing to go for a pacemaker placement? Um, if you're not told that in report and you walk in and you see that this patient's heart rate is 45, you're going to freak out because, oh, you weren't told that. Or what's their blood pressure has been running? Is their normal pressure, some people, believe it or not, a normal blood pressure for them is 90 over 60. So you need to know these things. You need to know what a baseline is because I know in nursing school we're taught 120 over 80 is the best, but really individuals vary and you need to know what is right for that patient. Labs, another important thing, um, if you have a patient admitted for cardiac issues, you're gonna be getting troponins every six or every three hours, three sets. So you need to know when your last labs are due. Um, if you're giving blood, you need to know if the physician wants uh, a hemoglobin and a hematocrit check. So you need to know what labs have been used and also review with that nurse abnormal labs that the patient has been running. For instance, if the patient has been here for seven days and their sodium level has been critically low the whole time, then it might not be, you'll still need to call the physician, but it's not something that you'll need to freak out over per se, because that's what that pay, what's been going on and the physicians are aware, but you'll still need to call about it. But you need to go over those labs with each other and show each other what's right, what's been going on with that patient. Um, procedures. A lot, this is very important for the patient because the, pa the patient wants to know, hey, what did my procedure results show? And you need to know what all the patient has had in future procedures. I know I just went over that before. So always know what procedures the patient's had. You don't necessarily have to go over the results right there and report, but you can look back, but know that they've had it and what they're gonna be going for in the future. I know a lot of patients, stress lab, I work in, I've worked in the stress lab, and um, I'll call up to the floor and the nurse didn't even know that the patient was having a stress test because they weren't told in report. And it's very important because there's a lot of prep to do for that. So always tell your reporting ship or before you're coming on what procedures they're having. A family, always ask who is um, who's there, who's been there with the patient? Who do you call if something happens with the patient? Um, I'm gonna share a quick story. My, I had a patient, he was not doing good and um, he, was at, he was actively dying. And um, they really didn't know what his code status was. And everyone, it was sort of like everyone was just passing the buck and it came to me that day. And um, I kept asking, well, who's his family? Who's his family? No one could really tell me. So I got to looking in the chart and I found his family, I found this phone number, and the patient couldn't talk to me, he was completely out of it. So I called the family, and it was his power of attorney, and they came in and were with the patient, and they were really relieved that I called, because they hadn't been there the whole time, because they lived far away, and they were really relieved that I had called them and let them know, because he was actively passing away, and they got to be by his bedside whenever that happened. So you always just wanna know who the family is, and if you don't, always look through the chart. If the nurse doesn't know, look through the chart, because believe it or not, to the patient, family is so important to them, because they're scared, they're in this environment that they don't know. So always know who the family is. Um, is a patient in isolation? Uh, we have a lot of super bugs out there, and a lot of hospitals have, um, especially with the Ebola scare that we had, um, so there's a lot of hospital policy, so always know if um, your patient is in isolation or not. 
And last but not least, because medications is a huge thing for us nurses because we give them all the time, medications, know what your patient's on. Just quickly review with that nurse. Um, these are the meds that you're gonna give. And um, on that report sheet that I was talking to you about, we actually have medications, it has medications, and then it has every hour that you would give medications and you can just circle when meds are due because some patients will have meds due at 10, some will have three. So it'll just help you keep on track because we give medicines like a lot as nurses that really leads our whole day and also as a nurse know what your PRN which is your drugs as needed are for the patients if they're having pain if they're having nausea things like that so this stuff right here is pretty much the gist of what you need to have whenever you're first starting your shift out or what you need to give to the oncoming nurse to give a good report so I hope this helped you like I said go to RegisterNurseRN.com to get those free report templates. And I hope this helped you out. And um, if you're a new nurse, gave you an idea of how to give a report, or if you're thinking about nursing, gave you an idea. And thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And I hope you have a great day.